right, this is number 11 of the podcast that has gone 11 episodes without getting a proper name. (laughs) This episode is probably going to be relatively short because I don't really have anything planned. I should probably write things down. Uh, I don't really do that. Usually I have stuff going on, but this month has been kind of slow. Like at work, it's been busy. And at home, I've just been, you know, chilling out. For whatever reason, I started making a fingerboard park, like, really addictively. It wasn't, like, a decision I made or anything. It was just like, man, I want to make a fingerboard park. So I had all this stuff for probably over a year. I had found this metal rail that was on top of this piece of wood. I don't really know what it was for. I'm assuming it was like a trophy type thing. You put it on top of a shelf and you put trophies on it. I don't know. But it's like a rectangle wire. And I have these boards that I don't use for shelves anymore. So I was like, oh, all I need to do is kind of, you know, make a custom brick to fit inside of there. And that would be a pretty minimal, easy fingerboard park to do with not much construction. So I started making it. And it's pretty simple. You just paint the wood that it's on. That's like the platform. You drill holes where the legs go for the rail. And you make a concrete slab that fits inside of the rail. What I did to make it cooler is like I painted street style stuff on it. So parking lot type white lines. And I laid bricks under the rail all the way around it. And I had to pretty much coat all that stuff there's fake grass that's in between everything that you can't skate so it's like a patch of grass with like a concrete slab over it and the the slab is like the biggest piece of concrete I've made yet because it took like four buckets usually one bucket will make like two or three normal size fingerboard obstacles this thing took like four entire buckets But it's a really cool fingerboard park. Like, I would start to fingerboard on it when it was pretty much done. You know, little things here and there like painting it or coating certain areas or whatever. I just was fingerboarding on it nonstop. And it's, like, kind of disappointing that the rail has these, like, bumps on it. But they force you to be creative And the whole thing is a pretty good length to where you can do like a trick onto it, a trick on it, and then a trick off of it. And the park that I have made for myself isn't really that big. So this has been giving me like practice time doing lines and combos. And also just the setup in general is making me be more creative with fingerboarding, like figuring out different combos or ways to get over those bumps and stuff and I was doing all that while also going to this coffee shop at night and filming because I'm going to be putting fingerboards in the play access store pretty soon so I think that's really what kick-started it as I started fingerboarding at the place trying to get footage and then I was like oh I'm fingerboarding and then boom it's like I should make that stuff stop being lazy I have some other fingerboard park ideas. Like this will be a video that I post up. I just have to edit it. I'm pretty much done with the park video. I just have to kind of convert the footage and edit it on the computer. It's probably going to be a decently long video. But I had to film some of it at night. So hopefully the footage came out okay. Because it gets dark really early now. And that's the only time I have to film really at night I have some other wooden boards and stuff that I found that I was going to make a staircase out of and then I bought this thing from a yard sale that's kind of like a planter that I can make another park out of so I'm probably going to keep making parks and they'll have videos it'll be like a series within the finger park creation videos so it'll be a finger park creations video but it's like a mini park So instead of me making an obstacle, it's me making the mini park. 
and all these things are for sale, but I kind of feel like nobody's going to buy them. And I'll drop the prices for sure when I have too many of them and I don't have anywhere to put them. Because uh, if I have three of them, then it's going to be like, oh, where do I put this stuff? But all the parks that I'm going to be making are going to be just like the fingerboard obstacles. Like they are available. You just got to ask. So that's what I've been doing pretty much all month has been making this fingerboard park. It's like a mini fingerboard park on top of a board that's like one by four foot. So it's skinny and long. And I've also been trying to tie the knot on this order for a whole batch of new toys. New toys as in new skill toy, like brand new, nobody's ever seen. And then new toys as in like different versions of other toys that I've already put out. But these orders take forever. It takes so long to organize and put them together because every little question, if it's like, hey, can you uh, tilt the laser, you know, this much more so it's pointing at the screw holes or something, so... And then that takes like three three weeks just to, okay, cool, the laser's in the right position now. Oh, okay, I noticed this. Because what I do is I I put all my stuff into a one order so it's kind of worth it. And it's easier for them, I guess, because then they have more of a project versus like, hey, just make me 30 halos. In my case, it's like, I need this project one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need all these projects made. And then I ship it all. It saves on shipping too. So I've been trying to get fingerboards in the shop and place this order so that I'll have some new toys and new products for the future. And speaking of skill toys, I got a real nasty attack in my Instagram by fidget rings or the fingers fidget ring people so i had messaged them forever ago like hey i seen your toy pretty cool like just trying to start a dialogue with them they never answered and all of a sudden i get an email saying that i broke terms of service or something on instagram and that if I keep doing it, I'll get terminated. And I'm like, what's going on? Because I, I really only post toy stuff on Instagram. And I go and I look into it. And it says it's the fingers got rid of the unboxing video I did on Instagram. And I was like, okay, dude. They didn't even message me or anything. They didn't ask me anything. They didn't say, hey, could you change the tag to our name so if somebody sees this video they'll just go to us they didn't do anything they just removed my video and flagged my account which is pretty shitty and i was like okay screw fingers i guess and i went on my business but then all of a sudden i get a message from them where they're threatening to sue me they're like we're gonna sue you and do a class action and we're grouping all these people together because you're selling the toy and all this stuff and like you're a bad person and screw you we're gonna get you and I was like what what I didn't I'm not selling anything like then I had like two other accounts message me one was a girl one just said the same kind of thing like we're gonna sue you on behalf of fingers and the other was this woman this random gork woman on Instagram who her feed was just like really basic but she was like saying that you know I'm gonna be in trouble because I have been selling fingers and all this stuff and I was like I didn't do anything like there was a uh, communication barrier because I mean they, they definitely weren't American they were like I don't know Polish or something but they they weren't good at English. They were just like accusing me. And I, I had to ask them several times like, you realize that I'm unboxing something that somebody sent me. Like this company said, hey, we're gonna send you these rings. Just tell people, link to our Instagram profile, that's it. And I'm like, okay. You know, sometimes that's how it works. Companies will reach out. They want you to unbox something. So you unbox it. And that's what I did. 
And so I made her admit, like, yes, I understand that that's what happened. And I was like, okay, so why did you guys attack me the way you did? Like, you guys full on attacked me with like three different accounts. You went crazy. You took down several of my posts. And that's BS. I was like, look, I have toys, I have patents, and that's not the way you should do it. Like, they came at me aggressively. Most of these companies do. They, they'll they act all sweet on the outside, but they're vicious behind closed doors. And these guys were pretty vicious. And I told them, like, hey, you, you realize you should figure out what's going on before you just fully attack somebody. Like, you guys didn't even do a little bit of research, because if you did you would see that I don't sell them, I've never sold them, and my whole page is just, you know, skill toys, and unboxing of a skill toy, and then the video of it. All I do is link to a profile or link to a website. I don't sell them unless it's my product on Play Access, and it's real easy to go on my stuff and see that. So, it's like what, three clicks? couple seconds of research and these people didn't do that they just full on are attacking people who are making it which I get you don't want people to steal your idea but it's how you it's how you go about it I've had people literally trying to steal my patented toys telling me I'm gonna steal your toys I've had people do that and, you know, the whole range. I've had people who don't realize that there's patents on toys that are already out. And you negotiate with them and talk to them and say, like, hey, sorry, yeah, this is patented. But then you also have people who are straight up like, I don't care. I'm going to take your toy because I thought of it. And it's like, what? So I get that. But when I when I have dealt with those people... Sure, it's pretty difficult to deal with somebody who's just straight up telling you, I'm going to steal your stuff. But there's also a way you can go about it. Like, a couple of things Fingers could have done is said, you know, swap the tag out for R. So now it's no more misguided to Chinese knockoffs or something. It's guiding to us. Or they could say, you know, hey, before we remove your video and pictures... Can you explain to us why you did this? And then, you know, they could go from there. They, did, they didn't do any of that. I'm not saying that they should have done this. I'm just saying that this would be something that a big company should do, especially someone who's trying to protect and grow a brand, would be like, hey, we've noticed that you have a knockoff version of our product and that's unfortunate because we believe ours is better. So we're going to send you a free one. Can you unbox it and take down your other unbox video? So see, it gets pushy when people tell you to like remove videos. But if they ask you, it's way cooler and way more respectful than just going and sending a strike and attacking and being like, let's get take down their video you know, without really knowing what's going on. So yeah, that happened. Fin Gears attacked me being all vicious. I got a new drone, so I've been flying the little FPV drone around. It's fun. It's I'm scared, though, because I feel like I'm already beating this new one up. But I'm getting pretty good. Like, I'm doing stuff that I wasn't doing before because I'm getting more comfortable with flying it. But it is one of those hobbies where, like, if you break anything, you have to buy a new thing. It's like a lot of money goes into it. So I've been trying to film some new videos of that. They've been opening up some parts of the school that are pretty cool. And I've been flying those areas because I probably won't get another chance to fly them. Once they're done with some of these areas, they're going to be boring. And right now they're not because it's like, imagine a bunch of fences that don't have the fencing on it so it's a bunch of it's a bunch of like boxes of a fence so it's like gaps and stuff and it's super fun but the moment they put fencing over it it's going to be like all right this area is useless so i'm trying to fly that while i can because security is always there and for whatever reason they weren't there recently 
So yeah, working on some FPV stuff because it's just fun. I've been trying to finish my music albums. They're pretty much done. I think they're done. I'm having some mental problems with like naming of the CD. One of them, I'm like, ah, I don't know if I should call it what I named it 10 years ago because it doesn't make sense. So now I'm trying to change the name. <clears throat> Which means that I changed the album cover and everything. I think what it what what's going to happen is if I can't get these albums out literally before the end of the year, I'm just going to post them up audio only. If there's no album cover, then it's just going to be black. At least I'm going to put them out. They're done. They're organized. They have track numberings. Like the whole thing's ready to go. There's just small things I'm trying to do. And talking about music, my friend BR1 is coming down to visit and he decided like let's try to make an album while I'm there so that's always been a thing that I love to do and I don't know why he said that and I don't know if it's because I told him a story or if he just knew I have no idea but I'm totally down because that's what I used to do in the past and he's like let's do that I've done it in less time. He's going to be here, I think, for a week. And a week is plenty of time. I've made full albums in like two or three days on vacation with my brother and stuff. It's just fun to push yourself and set deadlines and challenges. So we're going to make whatever. I don't think we have any kind of plan for it. He has loopers. I have loopers. We both have computers with programs on it. We both play instruments. So we're just going to kind of see what happens. It could be like, you know, 10 minutes of music or it could be an hour and a half of music. We'll see. Probably going to focus on making like tracks. But that's something that's going to be cool. And that's kind of like squashed in in December when I'm trying to put out all this other stuff. So yeah, this, um, this podcast is kind of just rambling. 2020 is almost over. It's been a pretty shitty year, eh? Like pretty dumb everyone's having a bad time the world's having a bad time um doesn't seem like it's a very awesome year <laughs> like <laughs> this year is definitely gonna go down in fucking history though like nobody's gonna forget 2020 and how miserable it was it'll be in the history books like 2020 that shit sucked boy so yeah, this is a short episode. My bad. I don't really have much to talk to. Like I said in the previous one, I'm going to commit to finishing these once a month this year. But next year, I'm going to do them a little bit more sporadically. Try to write down stuff. Maybe do a podcast when I'm excited and have shit to talk about. Because like, this is a good example of me not having anything to talk about, really. But I'm done. That's it. Look at